And joining me now is Republican Congressman Adam Kinzinger of Illinois. He is also an Air Force veteran and lieutenant colonel in the Air National Guard. Congressman, thanks for coming on. What do you make of what we just heard from Barbara, that Pentagon officials are worried that about what the president might do in his remaining days in office? I think the right to be worried, to be prepared. I mean, I, I agree with Barbara that I don't think it's going to happen. But what I worry about in the bigger term is how the military has been politicized. I mean, if you I actually was was thinking about it the other day. Every one of the institutions of government have been le delegitimized. The CIA now is political. The FBI now is political in people's minds. The Supreme Court's political. All these institutions, the last one that 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 enjoys widespread bipartisan support is the military. And this is like the last straw trying to politicize the military. I mean, you know, Twitter's not real life, but I have seen on there people saying things like, you know, people are in uh, the Pentagon must be in the pocket of the Chinese or the Pentagon has been planning this overthrow with Trump for a long time. And um, it's really, really frightening, I think, in the long term for this country. These are democratic institutions you mentioned that are that have been undermined, that have been under attack and now including the military. Why are we just hearing from you on this? Why aren't we hearing from more of your Republican colleagues on this? I wish I could answer that. I mean, Do I you talk to I, them. Do you try to that... talk to them and tell them to, to speak out? I try to. But, uh, you know, I think there, as we all know, some are taking the approach of uh, I don't need to say anything. The president's out January 20th. Some are taking the approach of this is a great opportunity to get retweets and followers by, you know, fighting for President Trump and and saying that we're going to contest the election results on January 6th, even though Congress really has no role to do that. Uh, but they're convincing people that somehow we can magically, without any court decision and any proof of these allegations that are thrown out, just make Donald Trump president again. And uh, quite honestly, you know, there are people that have spoken out, but I, I wish we need to all speak out because there is a real, real danger of this of, of this whole thing falling apart, quite honestly. When you say whole thing falling apart, what do you mean? I mean that so democracy hinges on the fact that you think your vote counts, right? So what's going on now is on the one hand, half of the country or significant part of the country is being told that it was all rigged. Your vote didn't count. The other half is, be, is feeling that there may actually be a, a, an opportunity or that there may be a, a threat to overthrow the election results, even though I don't think that's going to happen. And so what happens is when you feel that disaffected, you turn to other methods. And I don't think we're going to see violence in the near future. But what I do worry about is as this continues, the dark, cons the dark evil conspiracies on the Internet continue to thrive that this will turn violent and it will turn to where the biggest enemy is not, you know, the Chinese or the Russians or the terrorists. It's mm -hmm. the people across the street from you that think differently. Well, and that that goes to the point of you're saying you've talked to some of your Republican colleagues who sort of struggled off. They say, well, Trump's going to be out of office January 20th. First of all, he's not going away. He still has millions and millions of people on his Twitter feed that he reaches out to that that listen to him. And it's really the ripple effect of this. Um, there has really there haven't been many Republicans speaking out. And this is not a surprise was playing out right now. Looking back, even before the election, the president was forecasting this. Do you wish you had spoken up more and said more and tried to galvanize Republicans more on this issue? Well, I just think you have to check the tapes and see I have. But uh, I mean, is there more you can do? I guess. Um, but like I was very clear about this from the very beginning. Any attempt to say the election won't be legitimate or to delegitimize the institutions. And, uh, you know, the problem is too many people look at Twitter. They have to pick a tribe because if they ever do something as a Republican, that's a Republican. The left hates you if you do something that the right hates and you just end up picking a tribe and you can't even think logically anymore. And so I'm going to continue to just be outspoken and do what I need to do because bottom line is I didn't get in this for any kind of fame or job. It's because I was called to do the right thing for this country. Right. And, and it, you're right. You had spoken out before, but you've certainly stepped it up uh, since the election, since we've seen all of this played out. I want to talk to you about this Russian cyber attack. President-elect Biden this afternoon slammed the Trump response to this Russian cyber attack, saying the Trump administration was caught off guard and unprepared. Do you agree that this has been a failure of President Trump's part? I don't know, because we don't know enough about how this got in, why we didn't detect it. We know it's been there since at least March. You know, what, what could we have known? But I will say what I am like blown away about was the president minimizing this and saying it might have been China or it wasn't as big as we're saying it is. First off, we're pretty darn sure it's Russia and it's much bigger than anybody's saying it is. So I don't understand that. But 
Um, in terms of who's default, I, I, I just don't know yet. We, there's mm -hmm. really a lot nobody knows about this. I don't even think we know the extent of how big this is right now. But what are the implications, the consequences of um, the president himself not calling out Russia on this? And then you have, you know, we, we heard from the president-elect today on what he said on it. I think the implications are big. I mean, you know, President Trump's gone in a few weeks, so I don't know what the lasting impact is. But I do know that I've, I've talked to our allies all around Europe. I'm the ranking member on the European Subcommittee on Foreign Affairs. And, and they're shocked at why, you know, on the one hand, the U.S. has pretty good Russian policies, but the president can't say much about Putin. Uh, I, I don't have the answer to that, but I'll just tell you, there has to be a massive retaliation to this, you know, a proportional retaliation, or it's going to keep happening. All right. Republican Congressman Adam Kinzinger of Illinois, thank you for coming on. You bet. See ya.